forging ahead amidst a pandemic. The year 2020 is marked by the COVID-19 crisis. Against this backdrop, we would like to share with you the stories of a few textile and garment industry leaders who have remained agile and resilient, exploring new opportunities, or even contributing to the community. Featuring Alberto Candiani. With host, Nicole Kohlers. Welcome to ITMA Live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another ITMA Live session, Forging Ahead Amidst a Pandemic. It is my pleasure to introduce our guest today. He literally was born into the denim legacy, and it was an obvious and natural progression that he delved into the family legacy at Candiani Denim. Growing over the span of 80 years, Candiani Denim has become the world's finest and most sustainable denim mill, producing for the most prestigious names in the market. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Alberto Candiani. Alberto, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Nicole. My pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you. I have to mention this because you're somewhat of a ITMA superstar. Last year in 2019, Candiani Denim was the winner of the ITMA Sustainable Innovation Award. So please briefly explain, tell us a little bit more about your company and perhaps a secret behind the company's success. Well, I believe the secret behind our success is the unique combination of heritage and innovation. So past and future. As you mentioned, um, yeah, 80, actually we're 83 years old now. Uh, the company was founded by my great grandfather back in 1938. We used to work uh, to weave workwear fabrics. And then my grandfather was the one stepping into denim. My dad was the one reinventing stretch denim and I'm the one in charge of sustainable innovation here and uh, I guess that's the best part of my job um, because you know denim it is a very um, could be a very invasive product uh, so the, the challenge um, is actually uh, not really to lower the impact of our production on the environment but we need to neutralize the impact and eventually make it positive one day so that we can truly aim for uh, regenerative practices, even in such a spe specific industrial world. Spoken as a true innovator. I like to hear that. So tell me, the pandemic has presented many challenges. How has Candiani Denim uh, been coping? Have you had to make any adjustments? Uh, the pandemic has been something obviously uh, unforeseen and unprecedented, uh, which required some adjustments, of course. Uh, we are located in Italy. Uh, we are located um, in a nature reserve, actually. Uh, and the, the most difficult thing was uh, to interrupt production. Um, and the following uh, dramatic aspect was actually uh, related to the up and downs, to the highs and lows. Of course, we, we, we are in, in Europe. Again, we are, we are in, uh, in Italy, so we could take advantage of some social safety nets uh, in order to shrink production when needed, in order to reboot and reorganize. Uh, but I would say that the biggest adjustment has been um, a little different. Uh, I would say we adjusted, we adapted to this hectic environment and we decided not to stop any of our investment. So we tried to be disruptive because, you know, first, first thing you would do is like, okay, hang on, things are changing. We need to understand what's gonna happen. But I also believe that if you stop and if you interrupt, as I said, then it's very, very tough to restart. So we never, we never really stopped. Yes, we did stop production, but we never stop our, um, our work, our thought, our, our, our investments. So that definitely is a positive part of, you've just taken advantage of the situation and stayed focused and continued on. Is there, are there any other positive outcomes in this, this situation? Have you had a chance to perhaps 
um, help reach out to the community, help out the community. Any lessons that you can share with us? Uh, the lesson was a big lesson, starting with the fact that we are way more vulnerable than, than what we probably thought. And in a way, the lesson we learned is related to our health. And, and it does relate to sustainability uh, in a bigger picture because our, planet, uh, our planet's health does reflect um, into our own health. So what's happening right now, because we're still in this pandemic, and, and I actually don't think this is going to pass very soon, uh, our adaptation uh, requires now a higher level of awareness and consciousness about humans, about the planet. So when we talk about sustainable innovation, we're actually talking about the future. And uh, and the lesson we should be learning now is that we are vulnerable and we just don't want to get in trouble like this again. So we need to be prepared. Um, and yes, it is, it is preparation for us. I mean, I, I like to take it as a, as a challenge. I'm somehow intrigued. I believe there are opportunities in, 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 in this specific environment, uh, of course, no speculation, no one wants to take advantage of the pandemic, but you also have to face reality. Things are changing. And I mean, it's very questionable the fact we want to go back to the old normality. We probably want to normalize and create a new normality. And I believe that's where the challenge is and maybe where the opportunities are hiding. It's obvious that you have a strong commitment to, uh, to the environment, to your customers. Um, how, in this respect, how critical is it investing in cutting edge technology? Cutting edge technology is everything for us. Uh, and I really mean it. Um, I'm obsessed by innovation. We are purists. You see, you see in the denim world, the, the, the word purism gets normally abused when you go, you know, when you, when you think, when you talk heritage. I'm not like that. I'm a purist of innovation. Of course, I love, I love our heritage. I love denim history. I, I love every single detail about you know, the past and, 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 and the history of, of denim. But as a Kandiani, same for my grandfather, same for my dad, we are purists of innovations. If we didn't invest in cutting edge technology, today we wouldn't be competitive, first place. Second, uh, the actual grandma of sustainability is probably efficiency. So you just want to be efficient and stay efficient in order to produce with the best practice possible. And also efficiency is what keeps you alive and keeps you sustainable, specifically in an area where textile or like major textile operations like ours, you know, are not super competitive. Uh, the costs are crazy high in, in Italy compared to where, you know, especially denim has developed around the world. So you need to do, you need to make continuous, consistent investments in, in new technology in order to differentiate yourself, your product, your process. And, and actually today uh, we have a different opportunity. Um, finally, uh, traceability, transparency, those are becoming important things. So what is changing, and I think this is gonna reflect on, on ITMAS as well in the future, is that years ago, you didn't really wanna disclose everything. You didn't really wanna disclose about the technology or, or the ingredients you, you're using. You, you try to keep it secret in order to not to inspire, let's say, the competition. I believe today, of, of course, there is intellectual property. Of course, there are things which should be secret, but generally speaking, technology is what you want to disclose with your customer, with the brands, and the brands are actually craving good stories, tangible, sustainable innovation coming from cutting edge uh, technology so they could tell something more interesting about the product uh, to the end consumer. Yes, you did say uh, transparency, which was for me uh, the word that brightened up your, your, your comment. Uh, it is true that consumers want to be connected and know more about where the brand comes from and where the, the elements come from and, and how it's being used and how it affects all of us as well as the environment. So fantastic. 
What about, so speaking of this on, on another part of it, um, the impact of digitalization on the textile industry, uh, a lot of companies have had to uh, advance their, their online presence. Do you think, what is your view on this? Do you think this, is, uh, this trend is here to stay? This trend is here to stay, indeed. Um, digitalization in general is such a wide, wide world. Um, we were talking about transparency. Uh, as you mentioned, connectivity, like the end consumer, let's call him the citizen for a second. Let's forget about the end consumer. Let's focus on a citizen who wants to feel connected to what he's purchasing as an investment. He wants to know more. He wants to investigate. Now, if you're also able to offer him a digital experience, which is showcasing uh, the actual beauty of that product, the making of what's behind it, I think it, this is a, it, it, it's a win-win situation uh, for, for the brand and for the consumer or that citizen who's finally happy to know more about is, is that particular product. Um, but this is just part of digitalization. I mean, it, most brands are now committing to a much, much bigger game where uh, virtualization in general will probably replace some of the usual type of activities or the showrooming or, you know, showrooms are becoming virtual. Now, I'm a little skeptical when it comes to fabrics and denim in particular, because you still have to see it. You still have to touch it. You need to understand the performance. But generally speaking, I believe digitalization is something which um, will also affect uh, production and productivity. Um, there, there will be some sort of um, optimization of the process also because of digitalization uh, and, and its related implementation into, into the, uh, the process. Um, again, I don't really know yet uh, with the current technology how much of this is going to apply to fabrics, to denim in particular. It will apply for sure to brands and, and design. And, and actually it will, it will also change the way of purchasing a lot. So Alberto, uh, the pandemic has been likened to a full stop on, on businesses. What is your opinion? When a vaccine is available, do you think that uh, that will return to the business confidence will return? And do you think that sourcing will return to pre-pandemic times? The vaccine is very needed, for sure. Um, but I believe we shouldn't look at a vaccine like a way to go back to the old normality. I believe we should look at a vaccine as a positive thing for the planet in general. I mean, um, too many people are still dying because of this virus. Uh, the economy cannot really take another hit like, like the first lockdown. I mean, um, I'm speaking from Milan and we were probably the first uh, city. Uh, actually, Italy was the first nation to be uh, contaminated in Europe. And honestly speaking, I believe we couldn't really uh, take another uh, stop like that. Um, so yes, we do need the vaccine for many, many reasons. And, uh, but I really hope that we could learn uh, something from this pandemic so the vaccine can actually lead uh, business in general uh, to, to a better, better environment. I, I, have to be, I have to be positive. I mean, we don't really know how long it's going to take for this vaccine to show up. Uh, right now, uncertainty is still dominating. But as I said earlier, um, the only thing I'm certain about is R&D, innovation, investments, because we can find ourselves in a much better place in a couple of years with or without the vaccine, but hopefully that vaccine will come soon. Well, we certainly appreciate all of your wisdom, uh, your positive thinking, your innovative thinking as well. It's been a pleasure to, to have you here today. Thank you so much for your time. And we hope to see you in person very soon at an ITMA uh, convention. Thank you very much, Nicole. It's been my pleasure. Thanks. Hopefully, I'll see you in Milan soon. Yes, I would like to visit, hopefully, very soon. So please take care of yourself, and thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of another ITMA Live session, Forging Ahead Amidst a Pandemic. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and stay tuned for the next episode. We have a very special guest, Shirley Chan from Arcturix Equipment. Until then, stay positive.